رغم يدير دكتور على مصباح بروفيسور في اوستيتريكس اند جينيكولوجي فاكولتي في ميدس منصورة يونيفرستي ذا توبيك اوف ماي ليكشر توداي اباوت سيكشولي ترانسميتد انفكشنز ذيس از ا فيري امبورتنت توبيك افكتنج ذا سيكشوال لايف افكتنج ذا ميديكال كونديشن اوف ميني وومن ماي بي لايف ثريتنينج affecting the hair fertility because it may, may cause BID and the pubal fat during fertility so it carry many risks so it is very important for all women and for psychosexual life okay let us start what are the objectives to know the definition of sexually transmitted infection The classification, epidemiology and risk factors, etiology and pulsophysiology, diagnosis of sexual transmitted infection, how to prevent and how to treat, and sexual transmitted infection screening in pregnancy, and lastly, small notes about monkeypox. Okay. Let's start with the definition of sexually transmitted infection. It is the transmission of an organism between sexual partners through different routes of sexual contact. Simple like that. It is the transmission of an organism between sexual partners through different routes of sexual contact. So what are the classifications? Sexual transmitted infection can be divided into four groups, bacterial, viral, protozoal, and the ectoparasites. Bacterial, for example, Neisseria gonorrhea, Chlamydia infection, Tripeonema pallidum, causing cephalus, Hemophilus ducreae, causing chancroid, Crematobacterium granulomatis, causing donovanerosis or granuloma in Guinea and mycoplasma homines. Okay, these are examples for bacterial infection. What about the viral? Viral like herpes simplex virus, human papilloma virus, with different serotypes, hepatitis B virus, HIV, human immune deficiency virus, and the molluscum contagiosum virus. What about protozoal group in sexually transmitted infection? Trichomonas vaginalis causing trichomonal vaginitis. And the last big group is ectoparasites like Cyrus pubis, pubic lice infestation and sarcoptis scabiae causing scabies so this is the uh, four main groups bacterial viral protozoal and ectoparasite in sexual transmitted infection okay in addition emerging outbreaks of new infections that can be acquired by sexual contact such as monkeypox, Shigella Sony, Neisseria meningitidis, Ebola and Zika. Okay? So what about the epidemiology of sexual transmitted infection? According to the WHO, worldwide over one million, imagine, over 1 million new potentially curable sexually transmitted infection are acquired daily 1 million new potentially curable sexual transmitted infection acquired daily most of which are asymptomatic okay when we are talking about curable uh, sexual transmitted infection by the WHO, we are talking about the chlamydia, the gonorrhea, the cephalus. All of them are the 
dry communes, genales, okay? So this is called curable sexual transmitted infection. So one million per day, a new potentially curable sexual transmitted infection as mentioned by WHO. Is the incidence increasing or decreasing? The incidence really is increasing. About 30% increase in reportable sexual transmitted infection in the United States between 2015 and 2019. What else as regards the epidemiology? It is estimated that there are 376 million new infection annually each year there is there are 376 million new infection with one of the four curable sexual transmitted infection as i said before chlamydia gonorrhea cephalus trichomoniasis of these trichomonas trichomone is the most common constituting 156 million new cases yearly, followed by chlamydia, 127 million per year, gonorrhea, 87 million per year, cephalus, 6.3 million per year. Okay, this data according to the World Health Organization. What are the risk factors for sexual transmitted infection? New or multiple sex partner, history of sexual transmitted infection, inconsistent use of condom, because condom can protect from sexual transmitted infection. So inconsistent use of condom is a risk factor. A sexual partner who has sexually transmitted infection sexual assault living in an area with high rate of sexual transmitted infection use of alcohol recreational drugs and intravenous drugs all these are risk factors what about the etiology for gonorrhea the causative organism is gram negative diplococci bacteria known as neisseria gonorrhea and this is considered the second most common bacterial sexual transmitted infection compared to chlamydia trachomatis. Okay. Chlamydia infection caused by gram negative obligate non motile intracellular bacteria known as chlamydia trachomatis. This is the most common sexually transmitted infection in the United States according to the CDC and WHO the most common bacterial sexual transmitted infection what about HIV is caused by an enveloped retrovirus encapsulated with two single stranded RNA so it is an RNA virus The primary HIV signs and symptoms are described as flu-like, often diagnosed as an acute viral syndrome. AIDS is described as the latest stage of HIV disease. So AIDS is the latest stage of HIV. What about human papilloma virus? Human papilloma virus is a double-stranded DNA virus that replicate in the basal cell layer of the stratified squamous epithelial cells. This replication cycle induces hyperplasia to carcinoma. We know that human papilloma virus has many serotypes. 6 and 11 causing genital warts. Called, called, uh, called condyloma acuminata. So, human papilloma virus type 6 and 11 
causing genital warts called condyloma acuminata. While serotypes 16 and 18 are oncogenic, causing cervical carcinoma, okay, and related to external genitalia cancer, okay. So 16 and 18 is oncogenic. 6 and 11 connected to the genital warts. What's called the condyloma acuminate. So, human papilloma virus is double stranded DNA virus. What about syphilis? What is the causative organism? Spirochete bacteria known as Treponema pallidum. And you should know that syphilis infection are increasing compared to the previous report according to the CDC. It presents first with lesion called chancre, which is painless, well demarcated lesion at the site of inoculation. Syphilis has various forms, primary, secondary, tertiary, and so on. Okay, let us go to the genital herpes. Genital herpes is caused by herpes simplex virus. Type 1 and type 2 herpes simplex virus 1 and 2. This virus is a double stranded DNA virus coated by lipoglycoprotein with an affinity to infect target cells. Herpes simplex virus 1 usually associated with oral lipid infection. But according to CDC, Herpes simplex virus 1 is now leading in the cause of genital herpes in young and homosexual patients. So for genital herpes simplex can be one or two. Again, in etiology, trichomoniasis. What are the causative for trichomoniasis? Single cell flagellated anaerobic protozoa known as trichomonas vaginalis. What about chancroid? Chancroid caused by hemophilus to create bacillus. What about lymphogranuloma venerea? The causative agent is chlamydia trachomatis serotypes L1, L2, L3. As you see, chlamydia has different serotypes. The types that cause lymphogranuloma venerium is called chlamydia trachomatis L1, L2, L3. What is the path of physiology for sexual transmitted infection? Sexually transmitted infections are transmitted through sexual activity due to exchange of bodily fluid from the infected partner. The infection invades the human body through microscopic abrasion within the mucosal membrane of the vagina, venous, or any other mucosal surfaces. What else? How can be transmitted rather than sexual activity? by the use of intravenous drugs. Contaminated, of course. Blood transfusion, carrying the infection. Exposure through the vagina during childbirth. The baby can get the infection through transmission during delivery. Breast feeding can transmit also the infection. So, either sexually acti sexual activity or by use of intravenous drug, blood transfusion, exposure to the vagina during childbirth, and breastfeeding. The organisms invade normal cells and overburden the immune system, creating typical symptoms and signs of the disease. How to diagnose sexually transmitted infection? First, the caregiver should 
be able to communicate with the patient who present with signs and symptoms and undiagnosed sexual transmitted infection. You should take a detailed history, including, of course, the sexual history. Don't forget the five P's. Ask about partners, practices, prevention against pregnancy, protection against sexual transmitted infection, and the past history of sexual transmitted infection. Partners, sexual practices, prevention against pregnancy, any methods of contraception, protection against sexual transmitted infection, like use of condom as a, as a protective method, past history of sexual transmitted infection, so five Ps, you should ask about the five Ps. Physical examination should be done in a private sitting with a chaperone and should be guided by the presenting chief complaint and symptoms. Physical examination with the history will provide the concise differential diagnosis and the guide, the evaluation, treatment, management plan of the suspected disease process. At the end of your examination, present the patient with an open-ended question. To ensure that there is an open dialogue. If the patient has any other detail about their sexual practice, she can tell you. So give her the chance to tell you about any other point related to sexual practice. Each disease has its characteristics. And symptoms and signs and during examination. For gonorrhea, for example, patient usually present with dysuria, urgency, urinary frequency, lower pelvic pain, abnormal vaginal bleeding. On speculum examination, there is, there is mucopurulent discharge, the cervix is inflamed, friable, the active cervix. Okay. There is pruritus in external genitalia. There is irritation due to mucopurulent discharge. Okay. Physical examination if suspecting systemic infection, SARA physical examination should be performed. What about chlamydia infection? Most infection can be asymptomatic, but when symptomatic, may present with vaginal discharge, abnormal vaginal bleeding, lower pelvic pain, urinary frequency or dysuria. If systemic infection is present, the patient may be febrile with abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, fatigue, and malaise. By local examination, the cervix is inflamed with mucopurulent discharge, the cervix is tender with motion, and there may be tenderness in at the next region. The medial infection may cause BID and also may cause what's called kids hockert syndrome, very hepatic adhesions due to chlamydia infection as a complication and the patient will have right hypochondrial pain and tenderness due to perihepatitis. All these are complication of chlamydia infection. But the usual presentation asymptomatic or vaginal discharge, dysuria, pelvic pain, abnormal vaginal bleeding, 
okay? What about HIV, human immune deficiency virus? Patient may be asymptomatic or present as an acute viral syndrome, flu-like symptom. Malaise, fatigue, anorexia, fever, shells, arthralgia, myalgia, or cutaneous presentation. Signs of more advanced infection include fever, diarrhea, shortness of breath, cough, and the oral candidiasis. The chief complaint will guide the physical examination. The patient should have thorough history and the physical examination to rule out broad differential diagnosis. Remember that secondary and the opportunistic infections are common in human in human immune deficiency virus infection. The patient can be also complicated by pneumonia. What about the human papilloma virus? Most complaints are cosmetic in nature or an incidental finding due to asymptomatic nature of human papilloma virus, type 6 and 11, may present with genital warts, as I said before. Type 16 and 18 are oncogenic, may present with ulcerative lesion in the genital, external genitalia, especially the cervix, because it is one of the risk factors for cervical carcinoma or one of the causative factors for cervical carcinoma. Human papilloma virus type 16 and 18 are oncogenic. Okay? And also for, vul for vulvar cancer. While the genital wards related to type 6 and 11, genital wards related to human below virus type 6 and 11 take the shape of cauliflower like cauliflower like gross known as condyloma acuminata presented at the very anal region vulvar region at the vagina what about syphilis Manifestation of syphilis infection depends on the phase. We said before, syphilis has many phases, primary, secondary, and tertiary phase. Primary, the patient usually presents with painless, well-demarcated ulcer known as chancre. And please remember the difference between chancre and chancroid. Chancre related to syphilis. Chancroid is a different disease. Okay, so painless, well demarcated ulcer at the external genitalia or the site or at the site of inoculation of infection. This is a primary lesion. The secondary lesion in syphilis present with systemic symptoms, including cutaneous lesion, rash. There is also condyloma lata, wart-like lesions that present and they resolve during secondary phase. What about the rash? The rash is generalized, but more specific for palmar regions of the hands and the feet. In latent phase, there is zero conversion of the patient to have positive syphilis serum screen. What about tertiary syphilis? This tertiary syphilis start months or years after the primary infection. Okay. Systemic symptoms can range to cardiovascular, neurologic, cutaneous symptoms described as gametous lesion. Neurocephalus can present with stroke-like symptoms, cranial nerve deficits, change in mental status, general paresis, or capes bursitis. This is very dangerous. 
the most dangerous phase of syphilis is the tertiary one and the patient shouldn't reach the tertiary because we should manage the patient properly so not to reach the tertiary phase okay okay let us go to the next disease which is herpes what about the presentation of the patient primary infection can tend to induce systemic symptoms Vesicular lesions over the affected area, pruritus, dysuria, fever, malaise, headache, and the lymphadenopathy. Reactivation usually present with a prodromal phase to include tingling, itching, and rash consistent with vesicular lesion. Recurrent infection tend to be less intense with shorter duration. So. The presentation of the patient is it the first time to be affected with herbis primary general symptoms will be present like fever malaise headache lymphadenopathy vesicular lesions and so on and it is more severe in primary infection okay then reactivation usually present with a prodromal phase including tingling itching and rash consistent with vesicular lesion. What about the recurrent infection? Recurrent infection usually less severe, less symptomatic, and the shorter duration. Okay? Physical examination, the affected area may be localized or systemic. Primary herpes infection tended to be worse and the diffuse symptomatically involving various symptoms the male may have diffuse vesicular lesion to the internal and the external vaginal area okay so search for the vesicle at the vulvar region around the opening of the vagina inside the vagina also and in the very anal region What about trichomonies? Usually the, the woman present with foul discharge, offensive odor, pruritus, dysuria, dyspareunia, vaginal spotting, okay? On examination, there is yellow discharge, frosty, the cervix has a strawberry picture or flea pattern appearance and the odor of this discharge is offensive okay what about the investigation for sexual transmitted for gonorrhea, of course, we are going to take swab, high vaginal swab, or valvo vaginal swab, or endocervical swab, and use nucleic acid amplification test. Okay, what is the aim of nucleic acid amplification test? If you have a very small sample. Nucleic acid amplification test can detect the organism, although the sample is small, very small. Okay. What about the investigation in chlamydia? Also, diagnosis is achieved with the use of nucleic acid amplification test for vaginal swab or first catch urine sample or self endocervical swab. What about HIV? Diagnosis with the use of blood sample or saliva for antibodies as a preliminary test, then followed up with more specific tests, like what? PCR or specific assays. 
PCR for diagnosis and the confirmation of HIV infection. Specific says to isolate antibodies or a specific viral antigen for confirmation. What about genital warts? Diagnosis by clinical examination or biopsy if warranted. What about syphilis? Diagnosis will be guided by dark field microscopy and the serologic test to include rapid plasma reagent, venereal disease research laboratory, fluorescent treponemal antibody absorption test, or treponema pallidum particle agglutination. Each test is performed in an algorithmic process. Patients who are presenting with neurocephalus will need an additional step. What is it? Cerebral spinal fluid sample to assist with diagnostic workup. So I need CSF sample to assist with diagnostic workup in neurocephalus. What about the investigation in genital herbs? Diagnosis by clinical examination, nucleic acid amplification test from genital ulceration sample or viral culture. What about investigations and diagnosis in trichomoniasis? Wet mount will show motile flagellated protozoa. Also, diagnosis with the use of nucleic acid amplification test of the vaginal swab, endocervical swab, urine analysis. Or urethral sample. Let us go to the complication of sexually transmitted infection. Pelvic inflammatory disease, systemic infection from untreated BID, infertility from complicated gonorrhea or chlamydia infection, especially pubal factor infertility, ectopic pregnancy due to its effect. On, on the tubes, salpingitis, so ectopic pregnancy commonly happen with sexual transmitted as a complication of sexual transmitted infection. What if the patient was pregnant? She had carry risk of preterm labor and the neonatal infection. Risk of new plasma secondary to certain human papilloma virus strain types like 16 and 18. HIV infection, if not properly managed, will progress to AIDS. A fatal late complication of the infection secondary to a severely immunocompromised state. How to prevent sexually transmitted infection? This is a very important question. The answer is, first, accurate risk assessment and education and the counseling of persons at risk regarding ways to avoid sexually transmitted infection through changes in sexual behavior and use of recommended prevention services. Second, pre-exposure Vaccination. If I have vaccination for certain sexual transmitted infection, so I can use it. Like what? Like vaccination for human papilloma virus. Yes, we have now vaccination for human papilloma virus given to girls at the age of 11 and 12. What if the girls didn't receive vaccination? I can give it through the age of 26 years. So, vaccination could be a protective measure to prevent sexual transmitted infection and its hazards. And we know that human papilloma virus carry the risk of being oncogenic, especially type 16 and 18, and the causing genital warts, especially types 6 and 11. What else in prevention of sexual transmitted infection? Identification of persons with an asymptomatic infection and the person with symptoms associated with an sexually transmitted infection. 
effective diagnosis, treatment, counseling, and follow-up of persons who are affected is very important also. Evaluation, treatment, and the counseling of sex partner of persons who are affected with an sexually transmitted infection. Okay? So, don't forget that if we have one partner infected, the other partner at risk to carry the infection also. So when we manage, we should manage both of them. Let us go to treatment and let us start with gonorrhea. Gonorrhea can be treated with one dose of third generation cephalosporin like ciftriaxone, 250 milligram intramuscular injection. But because chlamydia is very common with gonorrhea, chlamydia infection, so we usually, when we manage gonorrhea, we manage also chlamydia infection. So we will add, after ciftriaxone for gonorrhea, we will add azithromycin one gram oral to treat possible co-infection of chlamydia. And after initial treatment, follow-up tests should be discussed with the patient. What is the treatment of chlamydia? Treatment of chlamydial infection, one dose azithromycin, one gram oral tablet or doxycycline 100 milligram oral per day for seven days. Then do follow up for the patient. What about HIV, human immune deficiency by Primary treatment and the management consists of establishing viral load, CD4 count, and distorting the Highly active antiretroviral therapy. Highly active antiretroviral therapy include the following classes nucleoside, nucleotide, reverse transcriptase inhibitor, NRTI fixed dose combination, integrase inhibitor, CC chemokine receptor 5 inhibitor. Non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor, protease inhibitor. Okay. What about human papillomavirus? There is no treatment for the virus itself. However, there are treatments for the health problem that human papillomavirus can cause. Like what? Like genital warts, for example. Genital warts can resolve spontaneously if you left genital warts may go away, may stay the same, may grow in size or number. Okay? If I want to treat genital warts for cosmetic reason, I can use cryosurgery, loop electrosurgical excision procedure, laser therapy, or painting with 25% budofilin in tincture benzoyl compound or with concentrated dry chloroacetic acid. Okay? What about syphilis? Primary, secondary, and the early syphilis infection can be treated with penicillin G, benzacine penicillin, 2.4 million unit intramuscular injection. What about tertiary syphilis should be treated as an inpatient who admit the patient to the hospital, give the patient three doses of penicillin G, benzacine, 2.4 million units, once a week for a total of three weeks. So three doses, each dose 2.4 benzacine penicillin. What if the patient 
carry neurosyphilis. Neurosyphilis. Also should be admitted to the hospital. Intravenous penicillin G equals 18 to 24 million units daily divided into three to four million units every four hour or a continuous infusion for a total of 14 days okay so neurocephalus patient should be admitted to the hospital the treatment is penicillin g equals 18 to 24 million units per day but divided into three to four million units every four hours okay what about genital herpes genital herpes treated by symptomatic treatment and antiviral medication The antiviral medication could be one of the three, a cyclovir or vala cyclovir or fam cyclovir. If you are going to give a cyclovir, the dose is 400 milligram orally three times per day for seven to 10 days. If you are going to give fam cyclovir, the dose is 250 milligram orally three times per day for seven to ten days if you are going to give the patient valacyclovir the dose is one gram orally two times per day for seven to ten days this is for treatment of genital herpes plus symptomatic treatment what about trichomoniasis you have different choices either to give one dose of metronidazole two gram orally or to give metronidazole 500 milligram twice daily oral with food for seven days so either single dose of two gram or multiple dose for seven days 500 milligram twice daily for seven days okay this is metronidazole or you can give one dose of tenidazole two gram orally and that's it so you have the choices the three choices you can choose any one of them for treatment of trichomonas okay what about chancroy Chancroid is treated by azithromycin, one gram orally single dose, or erythromycin, 500 milligram orally every six hours for five days. What about lymphogranuloma venereum? Can be treated either by doxycycline or erythromycin. Doxycycline in a dose of 100 milligram orally twice daily for three weeks or erythromycin 500 milligram orally every six hours for three weeks. Let us go to the next item, which is sexually transmitted infection screening in pregnancy, according to the CDC guidelines 2021. First, prenatal visit and late at the, at the last trimester. Okay, we will divide into two types. First, the prenatal visit and at the last trimester. First, the prenatal visit, all pregnant women should be tested for HIV, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and the syphilis. So, please, during antenatal care, in the first antenatal care visit, please ask for test for HIV, Hepatitis B, Hepatitis C, and the syphilis. Also, all pregnant women less than 25 years of age and older pregnant women who are at increased risk for infection should be tested for chlamydia and gonorrhea. 
So women with, who carry risk of infection, either because she is younger than 25 years and sexually active, or carry other risks, or older and carry other risks of infection, ask for test for chlamydia and gonorrhea. What else? Pregnant women who test positive for chlamydia should be retested three to four weeks after treatment and again within three months. So she will be retested twice. Three to four weeks after treatment and three months later. At third trimester visit, at 36 gestational age or below, pre-screen women less than 25 years of age or at continued high risk and all those not previously tested for chlamydia, gonorrhea, and the syphilis. Pregnant women with high risk factor or who were not previously tested should be screened for HIV and hepatitis B. So suppose you, you see the woman for the first, the pregnant woman for the first time, and she didn't do the test uh, early in pregnancy. Do it right now, okay? Test for HIV, for hepatitis B, and so. Those patients who tested positive for syphilis at the first degree natal visit should be retested okay this is as regard the third trimester visit what to do as a screening for sexually transmitted cdc doesn't recommend routine testing in pregnancy for bacterial vaginosis herpes human papillomavirus or trichomoniasis so please remember don't cost the patient and the cost the hospital and do burden by asking what is not needed. So there is no recommendation for screening or testing for bacterial vaginosis, herpes, or human Babylonian virus or trichomonas. Don't do that. Okay. This is a recommendation by CDC. What is the treatment of sexually transmitted infection in pregnancy? Curable sexually transmitted infection like gonorrhea, chlamydia, syphilis, and trichomonas can be successfully treated with appropriate antibiotic deemed safe, is considered safe, yes, for administration during the pregnancy. Okay, okay. Non-curable sexual transmitted infection like the viral one can generally be controlled with various antiviral drugs and other preventive measures. Why? To minimize transmission to the baby and the harm to the mother, do some measures that minimize the other on the baby and the mother, okay? And they give antiviral drugs. Lastly, some notes about monkeypox due to the, its outbreak in 2022. Monkeypox is an illness caused by monkeypox virus, which is a member of also box virus. Genus in the family of box viridae. Okay. Family box viridae. Monkeypox, similar to smallpox, you should know that, okay? And you should know it is a viral zoonotic infection, meaning that it can spread from animal to human. What about human to human? Also, it can be transmitted from human to human. So, from animal to human and from human to human. Or, contact with material contaminated with the virus. Okay, what about the symptoms of monkeypox? 
The most common symptom of monkeypox identified during the 2022 outbreak include fever, headache, muscle aches, low energy, back pain, swollen lymph node, followed or accompanied by the development of rash, which may last for two to three weeks. The rash can affect the face, palms, and the hands, soles of the feet, groin, genital, and or anal region. It may also fa be found in the mouth, throat, anus, or vagina, or on the eyes. What about the method of spread? Monkeypox is spread from person to person through close contact with someone who has monkeypox rash. Close contact meaning what? Mean face to face, such as talking, breathing, or singing close to one another, which can generate droplet or short range aerosols. What else for spread of infection? Skin to skin, such as touching or vaginal or anal sex. Mouth to mouth, such as kissing or mouth-to-skin contact, such as oral sex or kissing the skin. Okay, this is the, how monkeypox is spread. What about vaccine for monkeypox? Vaccine used during the smallpox eradication program also provided protection against monkeypox. Newer vaccine have been developed, of which one has been approved for prevention of monkeypox and there is experiments about other vaccines so small box vaccine can be used or the new vaccine for monkeypox okay what about treatment there is no proven treatment for monkeypox but usually goes away on its own However, complication may happen and may be life threatening in some cases. An antiviral agent developed for the treatment of smallpox has also been licensed for the treatment of monkeypox. So nowadays they are using sometimes antiviral used for smallpox previously given also to monkeypox until there is specific more specific treatment is available this is the end of my lecture thank you everybody this is my box published on amazon textbook of obstetric textbook of gynecology contraception handbook and the multiple choice question book you can go to my site on amazon here you can see many videos on youtube by going to my link here See you again.